hello everyone today in this video we will be discussing the fifth module of 21 phy 12 and uh, this uh, topic is about the material characterization and instrumentation we are talking about the nanomaterials okay so how to uh, do various experiment on nanomaterials to find out its size thickness and properties that we will be discussing okay so there are a few experiments in it uh, which you need to know uh, before appearing for exam so let's get started and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay so let's get started with the first topic which is uh, what is nanomaterial the, those are the material which has at least one dimension in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer and the classification are as follows 0 dimension 1 2 3 dimension this means nothing but if it's zero dimension means x y and z coordinate of the material are in nanometer if it's one dimension x and y if it's two dimension it's just one of them if it's three dimension none of them are nanometer okay and nano composite are the materials that are incorporate nano sized particles into the matrix of the standard material those are called as nano composites they, they are the uh, materials which are uh, incorporated in the uh, normal metals okay means the nano materials so there are a few types of it like thermoplastic so by the name only you can understand like they are uh, incorporated into the thermoplastic resins thermostat means thermostat uh, thermoset uh, nano composites elastomatic they have elastic properties they are mixed with elastomers that's why carbon nanotube made by dispersing carbon uh, nanotube in the material in the metal matrix graphene and the graphene sheet uses the gra uh, graphene uh, material and the pos which is nothing but poly uh, all geometric all geometric Silsequioxin, this is nothing but it's mixed with silica compounds and the last one is zeolite and compounds. Zeolite are microporous 3D crystalline solids of aluminum silicate. Aluminum silicate is also known as zeolites. Okay. So these were the uh, categories of the uh, various uh, nanomaterials. Moving on, we have the different instrumentation techniques. Mainly there are like five to six techniques which you need to know. So let's see what are the difference between each of these and the key points in each of these uh, techniques. Okay. The first one is the X-ray diffraction and the Bragg's law. Okay. So diffraction of the X-ray uh, rays from the surface of the crystal for those angles which satisfy the condition of constructive interference. Those which satisfy the constructive interference, those this, that's known as the Bragg's law. Okay, what is constructive interference? Suppose that there are two uh, waves like this, one wave and another wave. These are these two are having the same phase angle in between them. So what happens when they combine is this amplitude will get added up with this amplitude. If they are of the opposite, for example, that is known as destructive interference. If suppose one wave is like this, one wave is like this. So if you add up this point and this point, it will become neutral. Here also and here also it will become neutral. So that is known as destructive interference, okay, which cancel each other, that is destructive, which uh, add up each other, that is known as constructive. So which uh, X-rays form the constructive interference, those are the uh, rays which we are uh, talking about and that is known as the Bragg's law, okay. So this is the formula which you need to remember 2d sin uh, theta is equal to n into lambda uh, what is theta d and all that's mentioned here that you can go through it okay so what is the derivation of it suppose that there are two rays here one ray is coming like this both have same angle another ray is coming like this okay so what is the uh, distance extra traveled by the second ray the di uh, distance extra traveled is this distance right this plus this because till here it is the same distance and uh, from here also it is the same distance but the extra distance is this one s2q and q2t so we will be using the sin theta and all those things uh, to derive this one so n lambda is equal to uh, sq plus qt n lambda why it is m lambda because uh, it is having a difference in the uh, waves right means suppose that this is a wave going like this it went three times but another wave just went one time but they have the same phase angle between them at this point and this point right so but the difference is in the n lambda how many times the wave has uh, taken place that is nothing but how much distance it has traveled that is S sq plus qt so uh, n lambda is equal to sq plus qt and according to the formula n lambda is equal to d sin theta so sq is equal to qt is equal to d sin theta when you add up it will become 2d sin theta okay that is known as the Bragg's law x-ray diffractometer so here what happens is uh, the principle is x-ray diffraction is based on constructive interference so of the mono uh, monochromatic x-rays monochromatic means just one uh, color light which means either blue blue only or red only or yellow only like that okay so here what happens let me tell you the brief uh, information of it so what happens here from the source the beam is emitted and the divergent slit makes it into different beams here like this and from the sample it gets reflected and this is known as detector it will detect and uh, it will see what is the angle and then det detector moves to t uh, to theta angle and uh, this one moves just theta angle so for different incident rays it gets uh, means the reading gets recorded and the graph is plotted okay so that's what happens in the um, 
diffractometer and for those angles for which the constructive interference happens that is uh, taken into consideration that is the main working of uh, the first one x-ray diffractor okay and uh, determine this is the second topic which is determination of uh, crystalline size scarer equation so it is the formula which relates the size of sub uh, micrometer crystallites to the broadening of the peak in a diffraction pattern what is the size of sub micrometer and how much the uh, peak will broaden okay so b into 2 theta is equal to k lambda by l cos theta okay so the, it goes like this and again it comes back when the bragg an, uh, angle is increased okay the bragg angle is the same one which we uh, talked in the previous case okay so this is the graph which you need to remember and draw in the exam okay the third one is the atomic force microscope they are used to measure the surface properties okay like what is the thickness and all so it's basically what happens is this is the sample present here and the rays will come from here and the, uh, from the laser the rays comes and the photo detector will happen after the reflection from here and this keeps on moving in the left and the right direction okay then uh, various properties will be uh, measured and f is equal to k is nothing but there will be a spring attached here so the force is nothing but uh, k which is a spring constant into the x is the displacement so by by this we can calculate what is the force acting on it and by that we can measure the properties as well okay so uh, the afm uses scanning probe to measure the forces acting between a fine tip and the sample so by that we can calculate force and uh, using that uh, information we can calculate the properties as well okay so this is what is uh, there in the uh, working as well Moving on, we have the X-ray photoelectron uh, spectroscopy. So here, what happens is there is a group of electrons, and uh, the surface analysis methods um, are means for that purpose we are using by exciting the emission of photons and electrons. Okay, so let's see what is it's working by the uh, picture. So this is the same thing here. From here, the uh, X-ray waves are emitted from the sample. It gets reflected with the frequency h nu, and it gets passed through this uh, structure here. And then it uh, goes to the microcomputer where the readings are recorded. Okay, here the mesh electrodes and all are there. They just make the process more uh, means precise. And the silt is also there for the diffraction purpose. You can go through the um, means the working in a more detailed manner. But this is what happen. Uh, this is what happens in the uh, broader picture. Okay, means the rays coming from here. It gets uh, uh, means deflected from the sample. It passes through this instrument and it goes to the microcomputer where the readings are recorded. Mesh electrode and the silt uh, is used for the constructive uh, interference and the precision purpose okay so there are some formulas that also you need to know um, before going to the exam so uh, we'll be solving another uh, mil, means i'll be making another video in which i'll be solving the numericals which are like uh, expected of uh, means from this module okay so for now it's just the theoretical uh, concepts so it's uh, just the same thing i've underlined the important things you can go through it the same thing which i mentioned uh, that's uh, written here okay and then the next one is the scanning electron microscope uh, which what happens is will be uh, measuring the how much it gets uh, means the beam rays when it is uh, getting um, hit on a surface and how much it is getting deflected how much it is getting straight okay so that is what uh, we are uh, measuring it keeps the track of the rays hitting the electron the rays that uh, rises and the rays that are backscattered it creates a high uh, three, uh, means resolution 3D images okay. So here it is starting from electron gun where the electron emissions are happening and the condenser is there to make it into a, a single point and after that the scanning coils are also present which make the precision more better and the specimen is present here where we are uh, trying to record. So how much rays are getting deflected, how much rays are getting back, how much rays are getting uh, means turned to a some angle okay. So that is what we are calculating here and the secondary electron detector that is getting calculated after the rays are reflected back and uh, in the display unit you can see the results okay like 3D images. The, the next one is the transmission electron microscope here it is a tube of 2.5 meter tall and 30 centimeter in the diameter beam it is just uh, having the ability like uh, uh, to measure up to 2 angstrom resolution ok. So here also the same thing happens electron source electrons are emitted the condenser lens acts as a condenser to make it more thinner then there are sample and the objective aperture, aperture which just all focus on the same uh, point and finally we have the screen from which the reflection happens. So everything is getting uh, means uh, recorded of where, uh, where it gets uh, means uh, deflected or how much it gets absorbed so all those things are recorded this is just for the focusing purpose okay. So that is what the main thing uh, which happens in the transmission electron microscope it has a resolution up to 2 angstrom, res uh, 2 angstrom okay. And uh, the, the same thing is written here what I have uh, just explained and the key point is that the denser the specimen the more electrons are scattered forming a darker image. So the denser the specimen the darker the image the more transparent and thinner the more uh, like um, brighter image okay. 
So this is basically it what you what I'll need to know in the module 5 and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.